Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Jacob. This is Swanson's Garage. Let's see if we can get that put together this got week. Felt cut to length. Got my jig here we made previously to rip this felt down to an inch and an eighth. The size needed for those backer plates. Put it in there. Put that top piece on. Rip it to size. Slide it down. Rest of it. It's nice having the right jigs and fixtures set up to do what you need to do. It saves so much time. You can do it so much more accurately than trying to lay out a straight edge or whatever. There. Let's see if we can get it clamped onto the ring now.
down to our last two of the different style of rivet. Cut them down the length now and get them peened over. Nice. One more thing done. I just got done putting these final drive uh, races in. I put a little smear of Loctite 660 on them. Installed them. I just got done putting some sealant on the keeper bolt threads so that doesn't weep any oil on her nice beautiful paint job so that's all finalized did that both sides left and right so now those are done we can put all this stuff back together and we can actually dry fit our newly finished backer plate now make sure everything's going to work awesome I'm back at it today, seeing if I can remember how to put this all back together. I got the pinion axle stuck back in the housing. For just curiosity, uh, seeing how much play there was with the new bearing races. And there's, you know, maybe, you know, five, six thou, both sides. So I consider that pretty decent. I don't remember off the top of my head what it was before, but I'm pretty sure it was more than that. So we've improved upon that. Um... You put the rest of the stuff together, throw these backer plates on, see if everything works. Cut a bunch of gaskets, and I did a bunch of tuning and fitting and dry fitting, and I think I'm pretty happy with how everything is coming together here. So I got gaskets in between both layers here to keep any oil from the inside coming out there and any oil from in the here coming out here same story with this both sides of that I don't even honestly remember at this point if there actually was a gasket here or not when I took it apart same with here but I don't see any reason why that should be a problem it should keep any of the lube from the final drives from working their way out and dripping out on the outside same story on this side had this one off several times, off and on several times, to try to get this area of the plate to fit nicely against that plate. It was out, and I think I got it pretty decent now, especially by the time we put a layer of sealant on there when we final assemble everything. Should be pretty good and sealed up. I sure hope so, at least. As I said before, my goal with these restorations is to have as minimal oil leaks as possible. I mean, these old machines seems like no matter how good you try, there's always some leak somewhere. But the goal is to try to not to have any. Um, of course, none of this is final assembled because I will have this all off of the tractor for painting purposes. It would be much easier to get everything painted if those are off, I'll have them laying flat on a sawhorse and then I can easily paint, you know, all this area, whatever on the castings where you can't give any access to that at this moment when it's all together. So moving on to the next thing. Feels good to have both of those back on there. Kind of starting to look a little bit like a tractor again. I think what I'm going to do next is finalize all these cotter pins in here. At this point, I don't foresee any reason why we should have to take any of that apart again. I sure hope not, at least. So I'm going to finalize all that and be done with one more thing in here. Okay, cotter pins all finalized in there. Let's cross our fingers that we're good there. Well, we got an empty bench there. We got an empty bench there. It must mean it's time to start working on a different part. We actually got a couple of these loose ends tied up. That's a nice change of pace. What should we work on next? So in recent videos we were talking about fan stuff and subscriber Dewey provided me with some information. He showed that these 1525 Alice's have Oaks brand fan assemblies on them. 
And he's absolutely right. When you compare the details and you look at the literature and stuff, they are, in fact, oaks. It doesn't say that, but when you look at the information, you can tell that's what they are. So thank you, Dewey, for letting me know that. Um, here I have a couple more questions, so I figured I'd dig out the manuals and just cover it in the video here. This is the earlier manual. It only has the single fan assembly cut through. This is the later manual, and it has two different versions of that fan cut through assembly. The only real difference I can spot is how the assembly is held on to the shaft, where this has a hex castle nut with a cotter pin to hold the assembly together. This one has like a little snap ring. Um, so he was also asking if any of these cut-throughs provided the original Oaks part numbers or if it was only Alice numbers. He works on uh, old Twin City tractors and that brand uses Oaks fans as well. And he was showing me a cut-through in one of his parts books and it has some of the Oaks part numbers, if that all makes sense. So I thought I would show, uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Well, look at that. Well, you can pause the video here and study that all you want, Dewey. But that should show you some pretty good reference of what we got going on there. And here is the newer parts book. Like I said, that one has the snap ring. And this is the newer version, which the tractors actually have with the castellated nut. And there's the info there. Again, you can pause as necessary to study that all you would like. Hopefully that's clear enough to see in the video. Thank you, Dewey, though, for providing me with that information. I appreciate it. Learn something every day. I should add, to clarify, these L part numbers are the Alice part numbers, and these ones here, I'm assuming, must be the Oaks part numbers, C and D preference numbers. Same with this side. Let's do some radiator work. Dug that out here today, got back in the corner and Moved everything. Uh, dug out the shroud and some other parts that I got. So I got a new cap and it came with a new neck. And my friend Paul, he had some of those recast a number of years ago. So I got a couple of them for this project because, of course, the caps were long gone missing when I got this project. So that's awesome. I dug out, last time I was home, some uh, petcocks for the bottom drains. I had gotten these when I did my 2035 short fender uh, a number of years ago. And I had to order, it was three of them. Uh, it was the minimum order or whatever. Uh, this is where I got it from. No affiliation and no idea if they're even still available. But for the sake of showing where I got stuff from... Uh, I did a bunch of research at that point in time, and that was the closest to the correct one I could ever find. And it is almost a perfect match to the originals, um, at least for the short fender. I'm assuming, I'm going to go on a limb and assume that it's the same drain valve for these 1525s. If anybody knows different, let me know. But, uh, so that was nice. I have a couple of those on hand for these tractors. Don't even have to hunt those parts up. Uh, we'll have to be making a, another fan shroud and guard and potentially we'll have to see as far as radiator goes because as of right now, this is the only radiator I have on hand. The previous owner has a, another radiator that we have to go rescue as soon as spring breaks here. Um, I have yet to see that one, set eyes on it, so I don't know what kind of shape it's in. I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that maybe 
at least you know the tanks and sides and whatever are usable but that'll remain to be seen just kind of a before shot here of course i'm going to take this all apart and clean it out and see what kind of shape the core is in uh, at first glance it looks terrible right but it's not terrible from what i know so far um and to put it into perspective the radiator core my 2035 that i redid um looked very much like this when i started maybe even worse but most of this is just cosmetic superficial ugly all these fins are bent um like when i did uh, 2035 i spent probably about a day taking you know flat nose pliers and just carefully straightening all these fins back out to make them what they should be what they started out life as and it turned out beautiful the only issue i see with this one there's there's a couple of tubes here that are kinked but as of right now i don't see any actual holes but worst case scenario i'll say those two do leak we can when we have it all apart we can take and plug up the ends of those couple of tubes if that's the only issue with this core it would still be savable um, so as of right now you know i'm going to plan to hopefully be able to use this core over again we'll clean it all out and i'll show you that process because i think we can we can fix most of that ugly in the back side of course the side you never see and the side that's protected inside is absolutely gorgeous not a dent not a bent fin nothing um, unfortunately they're offset cores so she can't turn it around and put the pretty side out we will potentially have to make a fan shroud depending on what we come up with because as of right now I only have the one of them so yeah just kind of a before shot here I think we're gonna, like I said, start taking this apart and cleaning it all out. And then we'll end up probably putting it back together to test it. It's unfortunate, it'd be nice to be able to test it now, you know, fill it up with water or whatever, but it's full of mouse nests. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there or not, but there's lots of mouse nests in there because that cap has been open. So you start putting water in there now and it's gonna make a gummed up icky icky mess at least now it's dry mouse nest so it's easier to clean so even if we got to make a couple of sets of gaskets to put it back together to test to take it back apart to blah 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 that's easier in my opinion in the long run than to get it all wet now and then it's gonna stink and yuck we have to get this arm loosened up it is seized into this it should spin freely now it's stuck in there we have a bent spinner knob that'll need to be addressed. I believe that spinner is good yet. So if we can we'll make a new, either straighten it out or make a new knob, uh, spinner rod. will be good there. The arm is good from what I can tell. And I haven't seen any obvious rust holes through on the tanks, which is surprising. A lot of times they are. And they might be yet, but we'll get it all apart and cleaned out and see what we got. Fan shroud removed. Can you believe all those little straight bladed screws actually came out? Um, longer one for the choke rod bracket, which was in the center hole. Looking nice. This should clean up really good. Tiny little bit of uh, straightening, a couple little dents, and that's basically good. This is coming apart great. I can't hardly believe it. I've only broken two bolts so far. Everything else has come apart easily. Every one of these nuts is going to be able to be reused, and I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of the bolts we can reuse too. That's not normal, at least for the other tractors I've worked on. Like my other long fender radiators, when I took them apart, I think just about every bolt broke. Little trick here, 
to assemble and disassemble these style of radiators on the Alice's. So when they're all together, these two on the top and two on the bottom, the nuts are inaccessible. So what you have to do is put them on, like when you say you're assembling this, you put those together first and then this side piece slips in and gets bolted on second and then obviously the opposite for taking things apart. Now I slip that off, now I can remove these last four bolts, do the same on that side and it'll be all apart. Cool. You can see how the overflow tube is routed behind that side piece. So that goes through that up to here. So when the radiator gets too hot, there's no vent in the cap. It goes through that tube and then down and it's open here on the bottom to dribble out on the ground. And then it's the same side pieces on both sides. They all have holes in them just for production purposes. They made them all the same, but there's no overflow on this side. Only on the right hand side of the tractor. Another note, so these little side pieces, the holes are offset in the strap. The little side goes towards the outside and the reason for that is so this is in far enough to allow for that side piece to come up flush with the outside of the top and bottom, if that makes sense. So there's a lot of different ways this thing can get put together wrong if you're not being careful. The core can be put together the wrong way. I've seen that done in one of my other tractors, one of my long fenders. The side pieces can get put in backwards. So the holes for the fan shroud are in the front. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things you can goof up here, but you just, if you pay attention, it's, it's not that hard. Oh, I got one more bolt down there and then we can uh, take this all apart. So place your bets. How big a mouse house are we going to find? Okay. Considering this should all come right apart now, like that. Ew. <laughs> I told you there was a mouse house in there. Can you imagine what that would have been like if we would have filled that with water? Talk about gross. Wow. What do I do with my brush? Top tank looks pretty good. I was expecting more rotten. And this is why we take everything apart to clean and inspect, if nothing else, because there's no way you would have flushed this enough to get this clean ever. No way. There's the bottom tank. Most nests in there, too. But from what I can see right now, it looks pretty solid, so that's a good sign. Let's get this crud scraped out of here and a little bit of vacuum in and see what we got. 
Well, does it look any better? I've started straightening out the radiator. Nothing fancy. Mainly what you need is patience. Lots and lots of patience to make it look, you know, go from that to that. But you can see there's needle nose, screwdriver. I got a pair of old flat nosed, I think they're like an old pair of like electrician's pliers, but the little flat nose is good for getting in the fins, straightening out little kinks. Many, many hours ahead of us. I'm going to continue straightening bent up fins here on this radiator. Thank you all for coming and hanging out. Hope to see you all next week. Later.